Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma. Behind the camera is Alex, and today we have ourselves a brand new camper van. Although we love our T4 camper, we wouldn't be human if we couldn't admit to occasionally looking elsewhere. So we had one last special night with her before parting ways. Little did she know we had booked a week away in an exotic location with a younger model. It's amazing how much has changed since COVID. Everything is automatic now in the North Terminal for EasyJet. And they just give you these to make sure you have all your stuff. You don't have to like get like tags and stuff on all your luggage. You just print everything off yourself and send it through. The following week, we'd be speaking at a conference in Parma. So we decided to head there a little bit early to see more of the island. We have just swapped a lovely sunny afternoon in England for a disgustingly rainy afternoon in Palma. <laughs> oh my goodness, I have missed this so much. Going to a new place that I've never been before and trying to navigate myself to the accommodation, not knowing what it's gonna be like. Could be great, could be an absolute <laughs> Oh. Well, we always go for the cheapest accommodation, so let's, it's probably the latter. <laughs> it's always a risk. <laughs> So we found this place on Airbnb for a whopping £20 a night. Absolute bargain. They're not here, so <laughs> we've got to wait around to be let in with a key. So it's not like self-service check-in or anything like that, or hotel reception. You get what you pay for. But it's or, 20 or quid a night. What you pay for. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't get what you don't pay for. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't pay for a reception or a warm welcome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we didn't choose that option. I love stuff like this when it comes to travel. So we've come in and through some very rubbish Google Translate, I think we've come to the conclusion that the person, there's a person in our room and she can't get hold of them, but that should be our room. So she's put us in this room for now, but only for an hour. This and then is we're the gonna, holding pen. This is the holding pen. And then we're gonna go over to that room. But based on her listings on Airbnb, the rooms look basically the same. I'm happy to stay in this room. I, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand why she didn't want us to stay in the other room because this is a much bigger room and we have the luxury of drawers, a wardrobe and a flat screen TV. Have you ever watched a TV when we're in a hotel room? I don't think we've ever watched TV in a hotel room. <laughs> but that's fine. Oh, I'm pretty chuffed with this to be fair for 20 quid. She's just shown me the bathroom and everything. It looks really clean. I don't think I could be happier. Bargain. Perfect. Our Airbnb was located just a 20 minute walk away from the centre of Parma, where we had our first glimpse of what we could expect from this city. Our first priority was wandering the streets in search of some Spanish food. We found a cute little tapas bar which turned out to be the perfect introduction to our time here. Is there a better feeling than when you arrive to a new place, you have a little wander around in the evening with everything lit up and then you go off and you find yourself some delicious local food and some local wine to wash it down with. I am in absolute heaven right now. While we're here in Mallorca, I'm hoping to have my mind changed because I'm definitely a bit closed-minded and I think a lot of Brits are about Mallorca as an island. We recently went to Phuket and we got to see a whole different side of it and that's what I'm hoping for this time. I have been here a couple of times to a very famous place to a lot of Brits, it's called Magaluf. <laughs> Shagaluf. <laughs> to the non-Brits, they might not have heard of this hellhole of a place. The closest I could probably describe, I guess, would be like spring break, like Cancun. But you've never been to Cancun. Cancun, so you don't know how trashy it and is, I would, so it might not be trashy. In my mind, it's, this is, Magaluf is worse than that. Having done a lot of research on the island, it's very apparent there's a lot more to it than Magaluf or all the resorts and all-inclusives. Over the next week, we will be exploring the island and we're starting here in the city of Parma. 
Last time we were in Spain, we slept in a tiny car for five days from Barcelona all the way to Madrid on the way to the Champions League final to watch Liverpool win. <laughs> if you haven't seen that series already, go back and watch us suffer. That car was so small. <laughs> so small. It's like a micro or something. Only the best for my love. <laughs> if you are going to watch just one video of that series, I definitely recommend one of the best hikes we've ever, ever done on this channel, Congos de Mont Rebi. Have you ever met those people that have gone on holiday and then they start correcting you on your pronunciation? Like, I've just come back from Valencia and had paella. Like, no, you went to Valencia and you had some paella. <laughs> We have come to the neighbourhood of Santa Catalina to explore the oldest food market in the city and try some tasty treats. And okay, it is five o'clock somewhere, definitely. We're going to start our little tour today of the city with a cerveza. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> we haven't even had water yet. <laughs> no. Which is kind of embarrassing. I have had a coffee. But it's also kind of impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Nothing hits like the first beer of a holiday. That's true. Oh, it's so good. So cold. Cold and refreshing. This market is awesome. There is so much going on. You come here for your weekly shop. You could come here for tapas and beers. And they even have little stores selling like alcohol, um, gifts, things like that. So it's definitely worth a visit. I have gone for a selection, well we have gone for a selection of tapas. I've got some cheesy ones, Al's got some meat and cheesy ones, and we're just going to eat and wash it down with our beer. And now that you've filmed, you're allowed to eat. Emma gets uh, quite hangry waiting for the I haven't eaten bar. today yet, it's just not good enough. This cheese looks outrageous, so I'm going to start with this. <laughs> it tastes like Europe. <laughs> Holy <laughs> That is so salty. I love it. <laughs> My face looks like I'm scrunching up. I'm scrunching up from love. Oh god. After stuffing our faces with rounds of tapas, we looked at what else was going on in the market. If there's a place in Parma to be having sushi, this has to be it, surely. This was our first time exploring the streets of Parma by day, and with the sun shining, it didn't disappoint. We slowly made our way towards the Cathedral of Santa Maria of Parma. This 400-year-old Gothic cathedral towers over the city and is considered one of the top things to do here. This feels so different from the cathedrals in the UK for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the ones in the UK seem very cold, kind of eerie, dingy, and a little bit creepy. I'm sorry if that offends anyone, but that's how I feel. Here, it feels bright, it feels colourful, it feels warm. They even have plants and things inside which kind of gives it a bit more life. It doesn't feel like I'm walking inside some creepy, haunted building. It helps that it's sunny outside. That probably helps because it makes the stained glass windows look spectacular. OK, scratch that. I found the creepy corner. <laughs> Even this cathedral has a creepy corner. It's got kind of a weird underwater... I don't know what other word to use other than creepy, but an underwater creepy vibe. I'm not the biggest fan, I'll be honest. The rest of the place, gorgeous. This, not so much. I do think this is the newest part of the cathedral and it was installed in the early 2000s. But yeah, leave in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you find it a bit creepy? Or do you think it's awesome? Or both. Or somewhere in the middle and you're just you have no opinion whatsoever. <laughs> Nothing breaks the illusion more for me than exiting through a gift shop. Leave in the comments, are you someone that buys something from the gift shop? And if you are, can you please politely leave this channel? <laughs> <laughs> I've paid eight euros to get in there, having a lovely time. And then, oh, why do you try and get more money out of me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with stuff that is nothing to do with the cathedral. <laughs> Hate it. Day ruined. I would definitely recommend if you're coming to Parma to spend a little bit of time around the cathedral because it is so green and lovely around here. It's basically surrounded by these lovely little gardens and I imagine in the heat of summer it would be a really nice place to come and hide away in the shade.
after you've had a lovely walk around Palmer, it's time for a coffee and a penis. And that's right, you heard me correctly. I am having coffee in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to show you this bakery that is spraying across Spain. That's right, they have a genitalia bakery that is very, very popular. Look at these reviews. And I have got myself a penis baked good dipped in Nutella covered in nuts. <laughs> When you asked what topping, I was like, surely it's got to be nuts. It's got to be nuts. I don't even like nuts that much. <laughs> now, I would gobble this down like no one else, but I know that you guys are going to want to see Emma to try it. <laughs> Can't taste the Nutella or the nuts. <laughs> it's very doughy. <laughs> no, it's pretty great. Anything to tell is great though, isn't it? Anything. <laughs> Absolutely anything. Covered in chocolate. <laughs> After Alex cleaned himself up, we went in search of a bar to enjoy sunset overlooking the marina before leaving the city the following day. <laughs> I feel like a proper backpacker again. <laughs> Let's go. We packed up and left our Airbnb in the city, jumped on a bus, and we are making our way to the eastern part of the island where we are going to collect our camper van. Now, something we didn't realize about Airbnb is not only can you hire out accommodation, but you can also hire out accommodation in the form of a camper van on Airbnb. So technically, what you're doing through Airbnb is only hiring out it as accommodation, i.e. parked somewhere and you are living in it. However, you can also make a deal with the camper van owner to be able to take it out and about and they organize insurance for you. So just make sure you message them in advance to make sure that that's actually the case. I guess you can kind of think of it in the same way as when you go and stay at a villa somewhere through Airbnb and you rent bikes or kayaks through them. It's the same sort of thing. Um, all we have to do, I think, when we get there is leave a 600 euro deposit that we can do via our credit card and happy days. I think it's all included in the price so we don't have to pay anything extra on top of it. One of the reasons we've decided to go for this option, other than the fact that we obviously love campervan life, is because when we looked into the price of accommodation and hiring a car, it was actually far more expensive than it would be just to hire the campervan. That was the easiest handover ever for renting a car. It was so nice because as well, like it didn't seem too corporate. Like it was clearly just a, a bloke who loves van life and loves camper vans. He converted them all himself. Yeah. So he's clear, clearly very passionate about it as well. And he had loads of great tips and place for us to go and sleep. So yeah, I have nothing but like good vibes from that experience. But we could definitely recommend Caracol and Friends if you want to come to Mallorca it is definitely the best place to get your camper vans and he's a bit of a VW enthusiast he has a lovely range of VWs and he gave us a lot of great recommendations on the island sort of secret places to go so we can definitely recommend him After stopping at the supermarket for some supplies we went off in search of our first park up of the trip and it is a stonker. Look at it out the window. I am so chuffed with this. This is like what I imagined when we decided to do this. I am so glad that he recommended some spots as well because it just meant that we could hit the ground running, find a spot and not get like stressed about where we were going and not have to worry about it getting dark without finding a place or anything like that. The owner did ask us not to disclose his secret spots, otherwise they would not be so secret after all. Um, he actually likes to keep them secret just for his customers only, so if anyone does book with him, he will disclose all this information to you. But otherwise, sorry guys, you're going to have to miss out. We did actually ask him if he would mind offering a discount for any of you lovely beans out there who would also like to hire one of his vans and he very kindly agreed so we will leave a link to his Airbnb and his Instagram down below and if you are interested in going to book make sure you mention travel beans as you do it and you will get 10% off allow me to give you a quick tour it will be a quick tour because as you can see there's not that much space in here. It's very similar to our T4 at home. So what have we got? We've got ourselves a fridge, a cooker, sink, which is luxury because if you've seen our T4, you'll know we don't have a sink. Crisps, which live in the sink. The bed, which pulls out to about here. And then underneath you have some underbed storage. 
Uh, there is actually a shower that goes off the back as well. So putting the water pump on works the sink and the shower at the back. And that's it. That's your grand tour. Done. We are going to enjoy ourselves for the rest of the evening. And we are going to have lots of delicious Mallorcan wine and cheese. And, and beers. And beers and everything else. But we can't wait for the next videos where we go and explore Mallorca. And hopefully it just gets better because this is a great start. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And also leave us a comment. Let us know, have you ever hired a camper van abroad, even though you own one at home? And more importantly, would you eat the penis? <laughs> What toppings would you get on your penis? <laughs> Answer that and more in the comments, please. Make us laugh. <laughs> and nothing left to say, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. And I don't know the Spanish word for beans or out, so beans out! Next time on Travel Beans.